Hi, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about falling head method that is used to measure saturated hydraulic conductivity of soil. This is a part of our course, our bachelor level course on groundwater hydrology, okay? In the previous lecture, we talked about the constant head method that is commonly used to measure saturated hydraulic conductivity. An alternative method um, to constant head method is actually falling head method. And in, that, in this method, you don't need anymore to maintain a constant uh, head basically above your soil column, uh, or you don't need anymore to measure the outflow, the volume of the uh, outflow, okay? All you need to do is to measure the initial and final depths of water expressed as pressure head in un unit of length. And I'm going to explain for you how it works, okay? So let's say this is your soil column, okay? And, and then you have this water container above the soil column. And capital A here is the cross-sectional area of the soil. The capital L here is the length of your soil. And the A here, the small A, is the cross-sectional uh, area of the um, container. H1T and H2T is the initial and final height of the water uh, as a function of time because it is changing over time, right? So here, uh, to calculate the... the, the Dorsi velocity through the soil column Q will be equal to V. Capital V is the volume of the collected water divided by the area divided by T. Okay, T is the time required to collect this uh, volume. And that is equal to, so instead of V divided by T here, I write A times DH divided by T, DT. DH over DT is the basically the velocity of this, um, the, the velocity of the uh, reduction of the or receding uh, of the of the water level in the container, and I multiply that by A to get the volumetric flux, and then you divide it by the capital A to get the um, uh, Dorsey velocity in the unit unit of length per in the dimension of length per time. Okay, so. Uh, Basically, all I wanted to say is that the Dorsey velocity here for such a system is equal to A divided by the small a divided by capital A times dH over dt. On the other hand, we know that the Dorsey velocity is equal to minus Ks times delta H over delta Z. So all I need to do is to equate these two expressions. So therefore, A divided by A, capital A, times dH over dt will be equal to minus Ks times delta H over delta Z. Okay, so let's consider this is basically level one. Let me write it here. This is level one and this is level two. So the uh, inflow and outflow, okay? And so delta H over delta Z will be equal to H2 minus H1 divided by Z2 minus Z1, okay? Z2, if we assume here this is as well, the outflow is a reference level. So Z2 will be equal to L because that is equal to vertical distance between point of interest and your reference level. And the, the reference level is here. Point of interest is the distance is L. Therefore, this will be equal to L minus Z1 is equal to zero because it is at the reference level. So Z2 minus Z1 will be equal to L time, uh, so, so you have Ks here, you have delta Z here, and about, uh, so what about delta H? So delta H is equal to H2 minus H1. So let's write it for, uh, for example, point 0.1. So H1 for point 0.1 will be equal to gravitational head, which is equal to zero, right? Plus the pressure head. And since it is in, introduced to the atmosphere, this will be equal to zero. So H1 is equal to zero. And, and, and for H2, you can do exactly the same. So let me, delete this one here, otherwise it's very crowded here. So for H2, it will be equal to, again, gravitational head. So two is to put, level two is here. Gravitational head is equal to L and the plus hydrostatic pressure, which is equal to the vertical distance between point of interest that is here and free water surface. We discussed about that in one of the previous uh, uh, lectures. And the distance is equal to basically plus H2. T, because this distance is changing, right? Because the height of the water is changing. Therefore, H2 minus H1 will be equal to HT plus L, that is H2 minus H1, which is equal to zero. So that is why I just explained all that just to show you how you write, how you come from here to this one, okay? And the rest is just algebra. You just rearrange this equation, 
you just rearrange this equation and take the integral from h1 to h2, that is two different height here, and from t1 to t2, okay? And this is a uh, relatively a straightforward integral. Okay, you can calculate this integral using the uh, integral tables, and then you plug in the limits of the integral, uh, and the same as here, that is ks divided by l dt, the integral of that uh, will be basically ks divided by l times t, and then you put the limit of the integral, and then you end up with this expression. And as you can see here, to calculate ks, you need the a, that is the area here given, a, that is the area of the soil column, capital A, L you already have, that is the length of the column, the initial height and the final height, that, that is the only thing that you need to measure. And the L again, you have it, T2, the time that is required to um, have the basically water level moves from H1 to H2, uh, that you have. Therefore, you can simply calculate Ks, okay? As well, uh, if you want for simplicity, you, instead of H1 plus L, you can write capital H1, and H2 plus L, you can write capital H2. And that is the formula you need to calculate your um, saturated hydraulic conductivity, and it is called falling head method, okay? There's an example here, a very simple example. Um, let, uh, so let's solve it. That is a 100 centimeter long soil column is saturated, and 10 centimeter of water is ponded or maintained over the top at t equal to zero in a vessel that has the same cross-sectional area as the columns. So here, uh, so this is, let's say, let me draw it here. This is, let's say your soil column, okay? And this vessel has the same cross-sectional area, okay? That is 10 centimeter in height. This is 100 centimeter, okay? And the cross-sectional area is the same. And then, uh, so the question is, so yeah, at one t equal to one hour, the height of the overlaying water has fallen to five centimeter, okay? So initially it was 10 centimeter, after one hour it dropped to five centimeter. The question is calculate the Ks. So this is, you literally just need to plug in these values in, uh, to, uh, into this equation because you have everything here. So that equation is given in the previous slide. Let me move this one. So here you have this equation, right? So you just write it down here. The L already given, that is 100. Uh, T2 is given, that is one hour, okay? And the question is in centimeter per day, so you're converting the time to day, so the T2 is given. A and A, the small A, a and the capital A, since the cross-sectional area is the same, so they cancel out each other. H1 is equal to, as you can see here, uh, H1 is equal to H1, a small letter, plus L, and H2 is H2 plus L. Therefore, uh, H1 is equal to the uh, height of the water that is 10 centimeter plus L, that is the length of the column given in the question that is 110. So this is as well known. H2 is equal to height of the water, the final height that is five centimeter plus the length of the column that is 10 centimeter, that will be equal to uh, 105 centimeters. So that is as well given. So you have all the parameters, you plug it here, and then you get the uh, Ks value, okay? Which is 111.65 centimeter per day. And that was, that is about falling head method. Okay, uh, I hope uh, you found this video helpful. Thank you.